FIU, 94% of the graduates entering the workforce find work within six months of their graduation. What is the probability that among 15 graduates, more than two of them find jobs within six months of graduation? So we looked at a problem just like this, in fact, the same problem basically, except for in that earlier problem, they asked for the probability that exactly 12 found jobs. Now they're saying for the probability that more than two of them find jobs. The difference then is that in this problem, we have um, many probabilities involved because more than two is the case of the probability that three of them find jobs added to the probability that four of them find jobs, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, all the way up to 15, right? Because more than two could be any number from three to 15. Those are all separate probabilities. For example, the probability that exactly three of them find a job should be added to the probability that exactly four find a job, so on and so forth. So that's a lot of calculations we'd have to do to solve this problem. Of course, with software or a table, you could speed it up a little bit, but I'd like to show you a way to do it by hand using a little clever thinking and a tiny bit of algebra. So here's what we're going to do. Let's write a true statement here underneath the problem, something that's always true. Um, one is the total amount of probability for any probability distribution. In other words, if you have all the possible outcomes and you add them all together, the probabilities for all those possible outcomes would have to add up to 100%. So if I have something like the probability that no one finds a job plus the probability that one person finds a job plus the probability that two people find a job plus the probability that three people find a job plus dot 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 plus the probability that uh, 15 people find a job. If I added all those together, it has to be 100% because this covers every possible case, right? Either none of the 15 find a job, one of the 15 people find a job, dot, 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 all the way up to all of them find a job, right? And if we look at that, what we're looking for is more than two. We want this chunk here. Well, we can find that by simply subtracting off from one this probability. So if I know what this probability was, and I took it away from one, I'd be left over with what's here, right? Because these two pieces added together give you one. That means if I take one and subtract this away, I get this part. So that's nice. If I can get these three probabilities, then I can do the problem pretty easily. Now, these probabilities can be found from a table. That's certainly true. But we can also do them pretty easily by hand. So let's just do them by hand. Um, we'll subtract their results. After we add them all together, we'll subtract the result from one, and that'll give us the answer we're looking for. Okay, so let's do them by hand quickly. We have three calculations to do essentially, right? We're going to take the first one, which will be um, out of 15 graduates. We're gonna choose zero of them to find a job. Um, the probability they find a job is 0.94, but no one is gonna get a job in this scenario. That's we're doing the P equals zero case, right? And then the other 6%, We'll have that to the 15th power because all 15 of the graduates will not find jobs. That's one scenario. Then we'll have the next scenario. It'll be 15 choose one. This is the P uh, equal, the X equals one scenario where just one person out of 15 finds a job. So 0.94 to the first power. That's because one guy finds a job. The probability he finds a job is 0.94%. And then 0 0.06, the remaining 14 people will not get jobs. And then we're going to do P2, or the probability that x is equal to 2. So we'll have 15 choose 2. And now there'll be two people that have a job. So it'll be 0.94 to the second power. And then all the others will not find work. So from 15, take away 2, we get 13. There'll be 13 people there. Now, if we add all these probabilities together, if we do that, we should end up with the total probability that we will subtract from 1. OK, so let's do that. Let's figure out what each of those probabilities are. To do that, we'll work with the calculator. Um, 15 choose 0 is just 1. We don't have to worry about that. And this is 1. So really, the first one is just 0.06 to the 15th power. And if you do that, you end up with the answer. Well, this is a very small answer. The decimal point here, um, it's, it's really almost too small to write. In fact, it really is too small to write. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write it in scientific notation the way my calculator has given it to me. It's 4.702 times 10 to the negative 19th power. That means there are 18 zeros before we get to a digit. So essentially, there's virtually no chance of that happening, right? We're not going to worry about that. We'll practically call it zero. If we add it to our, our total, it's not going to round off to anything but zero, so it really won't matter, right? It's 18 digits before we get to 4702. So that's like point zero 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 et cetera. So um, we don't have to worry about that one. That's approximately zero. Let's do the next one. Uh, 15 choose 1. Well, 
there's actually 15 ways to do that. So we can do 15 times 0.94 times 0 0.06 to the 14th power. And again, we get a really small number. We get 1.105, but again, that's times 10 to the minus 16th power. Now there'll be 15 zeros before we get to the digits 1105. Um, 15 digits again, even if we round off to any reasonable round off place, that's basically zero. So we can pretty much consider these zero. Then we have this last one here. It'll be 15 choose two. So that's 15 choose two. That's 105 and that'll be times 0.94 to the second power times 0 0.06 to the 13th power. And we get another number that's, again, almost zero. It's 1.212 times 10 to the minus 14. So again, adding all these together, we're basically going to get approximately zero. So at this point, then, our result um, is actually quite nice. If this total here is zero, then essentially we can drop that off and we get the answer one is equal to that. So the solution for the problem is basically 100%. You can say approximately 100% because technically there is some small probability, but the probability is almost astronomical. If you wanted to do this with a chart, you can look up 15. If it has 94% on the chart as one of the probabilities, if you have a good binomial table, it might actually have 94% on there. But if they have P.94, if they have N is equal to 15, and they have the uh, C or K, depending on chart, what chart you're using, of 2, you should look that up and I'll see that you'll see that you'll get a total of 0. In this case, um, you know, essentially, there's no probability that we end up with numbers this low. And uh, that means the overall probability then from, that it's something from 3 to 15 people who get jobs, that's going to be about 100%. So an interesting problem. I just wanted to show in this example that um, sometimes something is virtually impossible, which should make sense, right? Because 94% of the graduates are going to find jobs within six months. And here we're showing that none of the 15 find jobs, only one or only two. That doesn't make sense if 94% are supposed to find jobs typically.